That's, that's the cry of my heart. You know, um, when Brother Newton and Brother Ian get up here and make it sound like I'm such a blessing to the church and so many of you have shared that with me, the thought that comes to my mind is, I'm one person. You get one person's blessing out of me. I get hundreds and two hundreds worth of blessing from each of you and I really mean that. I don't mean that. I'm not just saying that here. Every one of you, I, I think I have talked with every one of you. I hope I have and if not, I'm going to try to talk to you after this meeting. But in every conversation, that's how it's been. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And that's only in the church that you find that. Um, the first Sunday that Brother Ian was back from Dubai, he said how out there it's a desert. And that just rung true with my heart. Wherever you go in the world, and maybe some of you have always been here in the church and always had it, and you don't actually have to leave the church to get that feeling. And in my case, I, I, my, my parents and, and the, my Sunday school teachers and the brothers here raised me with an appreciation for the church, but it only grew as I went away. And I realized that out there, there's so much that's offered that's false comfort, false friendship, temporary friendship. Only in here do you have that, 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 that home, that place that no matter where you go, you come back and, and blessing upon blessing and upon blessing. So before I say anything else, let, if you forget everything else that I say this evening, remember that how much of a blessing you are just by smiling to the brother or sister next to you, to the children that sit in our church, the young people. So many of, we've all been young people at one point, uh, and for the children you will be young people one day. But you, we remember, and I hope you always remember how it is to be a young person. And I think that's one thing I want to remember. I want to have a heart for the young people because I think the young people perhaps face more trials and, and pressure on them than anybody else in this world because so much of the world is trying to lure them in like a fish hook. All these hooks around and many of us that have grown older, it's perhaps not as attractive to us. And let the Lord give us a, a heart for those young people and the children who are growing up in the church uh, that we encourage them, that we let them know we're not hard on them. We let them know that, that they will pull through this, that... Uh, that they can be comfortable around us, they can share, come and share with us. You know, I was with, uh, I was at, at Clarence School this week uh, and I spoke to the children there. And one thing I wanted to stress with them, I thought I would share with you, is just a small thought that is rung true in my own heart. And I hope to keep that as something I'll remember throughout this year, especially in the years to come. You know, the Lord has not given us a very a, a lot of time to live on this earth. When you think about it, it's a short period of time. Seventy years, the Bible says, the Lord has given unto a man about seventy years. And the average life lifespan on this earth is actually a little bit less than that. But even if you assume seventy years, I calculated once that that works out to about 2.2 billion seconds. 2.2 billion seconds. Now a second is a short period of time. You say a second, one second is gone. Just like that. And and we might think, okay, I have time to do this. I have time to get my act together. I have time to put away my sin, to put away my unbelief, to put away my half-heartedness, to put away my bitterness. I have time. And really, we don't. That time is now. That time is not next year or when I become 40 or when I become an older brother. If you're a young person now, that time is not then. Because that's, the that's what the devil wants you to think, that that time for you to put away whatever it is that's hindering you from coming to a sweet relationship with the Lord that time is some other point. For many years, when I was young also, the devil allowed me to think, I'm young, I can, I can do whatever I want. I, when, I, when I become 20, I'll, be, I'll become a good brother. I'll be, when I become 30, and, and he constantly moves that age higher and higher. You know, This, today, is the day of salvation. And I think the sense in that is present tense, right now. Today, we can put away anything that we want, that we really want to, be, want to put away in our hearts. Anything that's hindering us from our relationship with the Lord. Today, if our lives are not right with the Lord, Right now, sitting here, we can put it away. That's the, that's the offer that God puts before us and He puts before me. And so I shared with the, um, with the, with the children there at Clarence that there's, there's one thing that we all face every second and that is choice. We all face decisions every second and we may not even realize it. Sometimes we don't even think it. We're making choices. What are we going to think about? That's a choice. It all, often comes involuntarily. Whether you like it or not, whether you think about it or not, there's a choice that you're making in your mind. And I want to think about what Jesus thought about because he made, he didn't even get to make 2.2 billion choices because he lived about half of that time. But in every choice that he made, he made the right choice. Let me show you this verse in John chapter 6. 
this is in, in, uh, in one sentence, uh, or the one sentence autobiography of Jesus, if you will. Jesus, if he was to write his autobiography, I like to think that this would have been the summary of it all. He came to this earth to do what? It says in John chapter 6, verse 38, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And think, those are the choices that Jesus made. Now, when you look at Jesus' life, we think about 33 years in one big chunk, 33 years. He came to do the will and he did it. But it was, if you think about it deeper, it was a second at a time. Each time he realized, I've come here to do the will of my Father. I can't do that. I've come here to do, do the will of my Father. I can't think that thought. I've come here to do the will of my Father. I cannot hold a bitterness against that brother, against that sister. I've come here to do the will of, the, of my Father. I cannot chase after the pleasures of this world that will draw me away from, from, from God. I've come here to do the will of my Father. Whatever, whatever it is that's trying to draw us in, he, the first thing he thought was, I have come here to do the will of my Father. Um, and so whenever he made a choice, whether it became a part of his life, I've come here to do the will of my Father, so I choose this. I come here to do, I've come here to do the will of my Father, so I choose this. And I'll just mention, you know, I divided the letter, the word choice into six letters, C-H-O-I-C-E. And I told the, 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 the students there, what are those, what I thought those six things might stand for. And the most important choice we make, obviously, is salvation, C for Christ. If you, if, that's where it all begins. And, and I hope all of us here are, really know the Lord as our personal Savior. And, and, for, and, and it doesn't matter how old you are. The, one thing, the thought that came to me as I shared with them was that that's the simplest choice to make. God doesn't make it complicated for us. Maybe the world makes it complicated. But really it's as simple as talking to Jesus as our friend and saying, Lord, thank you for the sacrifice you made. I accept it, plain and simple. If you're old enough to understand to say those words, if you're old enough to have Jesus Christ in your heart. The H I thought was for humility. The most we've heard here, the three most important things are humility, humility, and humility. Um, and that's a choice that Jesus made. And I want to share a little bit more about that later on, that he made a choice for humility uh, and that's why he, that's how he was able to do the will of his father. Oh, for obedience! And I, 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 obedience was a hard word for me. I always thought I have to obey my parents. I have to obey my teachers. I have to obey the Sunday school teachers. I have to obey. I have to obey. I have to obey. And then I realized that the reason God calls us to obey is because they are ones who have gone ahead of us. Those wiser than us, the elders in the church, the, our parents at home, if we are children or if we are young people, they have gone ahead of us, and they they mean the best for us. They are protecting us from pitfalls that are down the road. The I was, I, I thought was for integrity, honesty in our heart. And God, God expects, that's something I can be right now. I don't have to prepare it. I don't have to uh, wait, work it up. I can be honest right now. That's just saying, Lord, I am who I am. I'm not going to pretend before you. I'm not going to pretend before the people in the church. I am just going to be myself. And I'll tell you, that's such a liberating thing. One of the reasons you look up here and you see that I'm free and I, I'm smiling and I'm, I, I don't, you know, I'm able to clap and, and perhaps make a fool of myself when I sing but that's because the Lord has slowly helped me be more and more free of what people think about me. Um, and and as, as, as He has made me more and more free, I've, 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 I've been, I'm able to actually be myself. And I think that's what it means to be honest in our heart. And I really want to be that more often today. I want, this year, I want to be completely free in my heart from what people think and completely honest before God. Then C is for challenge. Um, and I shared with them that... the. It's very easy. The devil will allow us to settle for, level for, for mediocrity, something less than the best. But the scriptures challenge us to a life of excellence where we can live up to our potential in Christ, that Christ called us to, to live above this world, to live above the temptations of this world. And the rest of the world is just saying, oh, I can take it easy, just, just get by. But think that in every area of life, and it includes doing well in school, that, that we can do as well as God has given us the gift for. And we don't have to compare ourselves with anybody else. Live up to the calling that God has called for us. And then E is being an example to other people because we're not living in this world alone. Uh, we're called to be a part of, especially if we're in the church. We're, we're knit together more closely than people in the world. This, these things that I shared apply to the people in the world, but that much more in the church. We're called to be an example. Every one of us has somebody younger than us in the church, I think. Um, and so, and, and even if they're not younger, the, every one of us is an example in some way or the other. And if we live our lives with that mentality, and this applies especially for us as young people, we can live that way realizing that we are an example. There are people who, who watch us, there are people who are looking up to us, and we have to be an example, brothers and sisters alike, for them so that we can uh, challenge them.
You know, um, I was also studying some things in Matthew, and I thought I'd share some of those with you. Turn with me to Matthew 15. There's a couple of th thoughts here that came out to me. You know, one of the things they warn you in India when, or when, when you travel from abroad, when you come to India, is that be careful of the water that you drink uh, and wash your hands before you eat and, and all those things. And then I read this verse.